Hiya folks, Doc here. It is a beautiful August 1st here in Southern Ontario. And uh, it's Monday, and I've got the day off because that's how I roll. Actually, it's a statutory holiday here in Ontario. The powers that be at some point or another looked at a calendar and said, hey, we don't have any long weekends in August, so we're just gonna make August 1st a holiday. And the rest of us are like, yeah, cool, I'm good with that. Anyways, the situation here is uh, I've been managing to get a little bit of stuff done with the weasel. Quick little teaser shot in the background there. Uh, not a heck of a lot, but then again, there's a lot of little bits and pieces of work to be done, so I've been slowly pecking away at it. Uh, I ended up laid up for a week, but that's another story for another time. And busy and hot. This heat wave has been insane. If this isn't the hot, it hasn't been the hottest July on record for Ontario, I, I don't know what is. Anyways, a lot of days it was just too damn hot to do anything, so I didn't do anything. Needless to say, the shop's a disaster, and I've still got a lot of yard cleanup to do, and blah, 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 but whatever. Uh, let's show you where I'm at with the weasel, and uh, we're going to test fire the engine, because, yeah, diesel, yeah. Arr Okay, since I don't really know where to start, I guess I'll start with the, the big obvious, which is the drive line. Uh, the axle's mounted and all that. Everything is fixed in place now. I've got the lock collars and everything like that. Everything's tied down and Loctited and uh, everything. Oh, you know what? I wanted to take an opportunity here um, just to kind of zoom in on the back of this wheel here and see that aluminum go-kart hub? Well, I got a pair of those for free and I just had to pay shipping. Uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Lonnie Puppet Kicker uh, for donating those to the cause. Uh, like I said, all I had to do was pay the shipping and quite frankly the shipping was, well, more than most people would pay for hubs anyways, but they're uh, they're nice aluminum go-kart hubs. Uh, I really like them, they're, they're gonna do the job well. Uh, so uh, thanks man, I appreciate it. Anyways, moving on, back to the drive line. All right, so the axle set. I've got, I gotta stop and think here because I got a lot of parts floating around. I believe that's a 48 tooth axle sprocket on there. And I've got a 12 tooth on the jack shaft, gives me a four to one final drive ratio. And I've been doing some number crunching that may be a little steep for what I need and I won't know until I drive it and find out. Um, I've got a 48 tooth, 40, 48 tooth. Uh, I've got a slightly sp larger sprocket to go there if I have to and I can always bump that down to a 10 if I need to, no worries. So, there's your Comet Model 40 CVT. Uh, it's continuously variable transmission. Some people call them a torque converter. That's not really the proper technical term, but uh, you know, that's what folks know it as. So there's the torque converter, there's the CVT. Uh, <laughs> there's a welding tip I left lying around. Right on. Anyways, there's the CVT on the jack shaft. And uh, the jack shaft is a piece of three quarter inch shaft with two pillow block bearings uh, on a couple of angle iron uprights on an angle iron cross member. And uh, that center distance is measured very specifically. Uh, whenever you're setting up a standalone CVT like a Comet 40, in other words, a not self contained unit that just brackets on and away you go, you have to get your distances perfect for the size belt you're using. You can't just guess it, you can't just put whatever belt on or the damn thing will not work properly. Trust me on this, <laughs> we know. Anyways, yep, there's uh, there's your drive system all lined up. Obviously, I'm gonna do a chain guard and a belt guard and this guard and that guard. Uh, and as you can see by the location of the footboard there, my foot's gonna be in fairly close proximity to this stuff. So number one, I have to make a guard uh, just so my foot doesn't get chewed up. And number two, I think I'm gonna space the footboards out a couple more inches just to make things a little bit more comfortable for me. Uh, moving under the hood, temporarily anyways, uh, that's how I rigged the exhaust manifold. I just cut the factory muffler apart and, uh, you know, I didn't bother getting too crazy or too beautiful with it and uh, just capped the end where it went into the muffler and uh, did a takeoff on the side there for this down pipe, uh, which ultimately is going to lead to an exhaust system that I believe is going to run under the floorboard and out down low the back behind under the axle, etc. That's the plan anyways. I mean, I can change these things. Have welder, will travel. the forward on the machine, I'll show you the fuel system. Uh, I got this little tank here. I genuinely can't remember what the hell it's off, but uh, you know, older piece of like 70s equipment. 
and uh, I decided I was going to get a little creative on the fuel system. Uh, first off, because this machine is so small, I didn't have you know much room to locate a tank, uh, so I chose something small. And since this is just going to be more of a showpiece slash goof off kind of vehicle, I didn't need a large capacity, and of course, having a diesel helps with that. Uh, so I've got that little damn. I think it holds like a quart. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I decided to uh, decided to go all copper on the fuel. Get uh, get kind of a steampunk rat rod thing going on. Um, so what I did is I dropped by the depot and I picked up a needle valve and I screwed that in. There's my fuel shutoff valve. You'll notice that I don't have a filter yet. I still have to rig that, but it's coming. Don't worry. And uh, just built a little stand for the tank to sit on with a piece of angle iron and a piece of square tube. Tack that into place, fits under the hood, it's beautiful. Let me get around to the other side and show you the rest. Yeah, baby, that's the stuff. All right, so I figured I'd kind of steal a page from, you know, an old moonshine still or something like that with the copper. So, coming out of the tank, it uh, tees off and goes to the return line from the fuel pump or rather from the fuel injector. I'm sorry, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Uh, and I'm probably going to slightly alter the routing there, but that's what I had at the moment, and it's doing the job at the moment. Uh, so anyways, comes off of the T, and I've got that little bit of fuel line there just to protect it from abrasion. I will clamp it, I haven't done that yet. Then I took about eight feet of quarter inch copper line and just wound it around a pipe to create that coil. Uh, that probably adds about five minutes of runtime to the fuel capacity. <laughs> and I'm going to clamp that in place, of course, too. I haven't done that yet, so she moves a little bit, but we'll get to that. And, uh, and then it just goes off to the fuel pump. So that's the Weasel's fuel system right there. Coming around to the back of the vehicle, getting down low here, you can see that back bumper I built out of angle iron. Nothing fancy to it yet. It's going to get dressed up a little bit. There's something else going in the back there, but we'll leave that for a surprise for another time. Just kind of jock your attention off to the right here. And uh, you can see that six or seven inch, I think it's a six, can't even remember, uh, go-kart brake rotor that's uh, clamped onto the axle shaft. And what you're looking at there is the front brake caliper from a 1988 Yamaha XV Virago 250 motorcycle. And as some of you have been paying attention to the garage, there's the brand new brake pads I ordered off eBay. They came in quick. That was nice. Oh crap, i got to get on there and give them their feedback. Uh, anyways, I previously used this exact caliper on a go-kart I built for my kids a number of years ago. And eventually the go-kart got, you know, beaten to a pulp and by the wayside. And I eventually got rid of it after I stripped it for some parts. So you can see this red mounting bracket here uh, that I fabricated for it for the go-kart. And all I did was I reused that mounting bracket zapped it to a piece of angle iron that goes to the frame. And that's all good right there. Here's the factory master cylinder. And uh, if you have a look at it here, you can see this little lever here thing. And when I built the go-kart, I took off the hand lever, right, because of course this would get mounted to a handlebar. Just come around here and you can kind of see the bar mount. Um, and I fabricated this lever out of a quarter inch steel plate. And, uh, you know, I originally had uh, a return spring on this little hook here. Let me just back this out a little bit. You can see where it presses the plunger. I had a return spring here, and this went to the cable that actuated the brakes. Um, so I'm probably going to make use of this lever or modify this lever or something, uh, depending on exactly what I do for the brakes. And I've got a bit of a surprise for you there, so I'm not going to blow it away too hard. Um, but basically, long and short of it is, is you know, there's, there's the brakes. Uh, so the master cylinder is mounted level. Uh, the new pads are installed. Uh, I'm going to re-bleed it because it spent some time bouncing around in a box and upside down all over the place, so there's probably a little air in the lines. Uh, but that's the Weasel's brake system for you. Hydro, baby. So as quickly as possible, I'll go through some of the things I still have yet to do. Um, I've got to pin that brake hose to the, uh, to the frame in places that's going to keep it from getting damaged. Um, I've got to do a little reinforcing and supporting to the body because right now things are pretty flexible. That's got to go. Uh, I've got to build a seat. Uh, I have to locate and install a battery. Uh, let's see, what else do I have to do here? Oh yeah, I've got to work on the controls. I've got to get the throttle reconnected and come up with a way that, um, you know, I can hold the throttle at part throttle for starting and idling and then release it completely. Uh, I know that Fearless Front 
Todd Christopher did it one way. I've got a couple of other ideas that I'm going to address and if it comes down to it it'll probably be something similar but you know I'm going to try a few ideas first. Uh, so I've got to get the throttle rigged. Um, I've got to get the brakes rigged. Uh, right now if I had to stop I could probably just you know pull on that lever or push on the plunger but that's a little too dicey. Uh, tires. Need to address the front tires. Garbage! Uh, I need to redo the steering because this is still temporary. Uh, those tie rods are still kind of weenie and hacked together and just, you know, barely making it so I can roll it around. Uh, I've got to rig the exhaust system. I've got to move the footboards out a little bit so I can get, uh, get my feet in there a little bit more comfortably. Uh, I've got to build a belt guard and a chain guard. And depending on how things go, I may, might have to make a chain tensioning device. Um, obviously the CVT must remain in a fixed location and I haven't got a lot of wiggle room for the axle so I might just do a little roller or something, I don't know. I think I'm gonna do my first test drive and see if I deem this to be you know, acceptably snug or not. It's a little on the slack side. It needs to be a little bit on the slack side. You never want a chain too tight uh, but it may be too slack and I'll make that determination later. Uh, And I've probably got a few other little bits and pieces that I haven't mentioned yet, or haven't thought of to mention yet. Um, I know I'm going to put some personal touches on this and make it a little more rat rod like, uh, kind of like the fuel system there that, you know, just brings up steampunk and brings up, you know, kind of rolling scrapyard art. So, uh, you know, I've got some personal touches to do. Um, I've got to build a seat in case I hadn't mentioned that. And I've got to figure out what to do with this tub. I don't know if I'm going to leave it black or stress it, rust it, mm, patina, something, I don't know. Um, there's this bad spot on the back of the tub here. Um, you know, obviously being a wheelbarrow, that's where it always got dumped and rammed into things. And I might even leave that. I don't know yet. Oh, yeah, um, I got to build a debris screen uh, just to keep crap and fingers and things out of the flywheel. Got to do that. And that's about all I can think of at the moment. Oh yeah, I gotta do something with that shroud too. That bright red is just probably too bright red. I think I'm gonna have to distress that or, you know, rust it or something. I don't know, it's standing out a little bit too hard for me. You can tell me what you think about that. Uh, probably the same thing with the master cylinder and the brake caliper, although the paint's coming off the brake caliper, so, you know, that might work. So, obviously, uh, I don't have a battery mounted on her yet, so I've just got little life support system set up here with some booster cables. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I fired it up because of, uh, well, because of the way my schedule has gone lately. And, uh, well, either way, it might take a minute, but uh, let's see if she'll go. Apparently my battery's a little low. Get her back past the compression stroke. I think I need a little more throttle. drive it yet, but it lives. So, yeah, is it uncomfortable? You betcha. Is it going to be loud and obnoxious and probably a little scary to drive? I hope so. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the rundown of the state of where things are at right now and what I've done and what I've got left to do, which is 
probably more than it looks, but uh, I'm having a good time with this project. I really am. This was something unique and I needed to build. I mean, I know what I usually do is unique to a certain degree, but, uh, you know, the opportunity to do something that was just a little bit further off in the left field is something that I'm just really largely enjoying at this point. Uh, and I hope you are too. Um, you guys have been just fantastic. I really appreciate the views and you know the subscriptions and the shares and all that stuff. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, when I started shooting videos, you know, back when a few years ago, uh, my old channel it wasn't even really public. Just a 10-second clip of an engine running or something because I do something and I post it on a forum and somebody say, "Hey, can we actually see how you did that or can we see it run or can we see you do this?" So, you know, whip out the crappy old video camera, shoot 10 or 15 seconds, upload it, you know, provide a link to my pals, and that was that. And just it kind of snowballed from there, and I, I didn't think there'd be that much interest in it. Uh, so, once again, I, I can't thank you folks enough. This is a riot, man. Um, I've got, what, 3,500 subscribers or something along those general lines. And maybe by some people's standards, that's not a lot. To me, that's absolutely fantastic, and I am grateful to you, the viewer. So... I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, and uh, thank you very much, and until next time, take care of yourself.